Welcome to the very first of many tutorial videos on how to play the Zephyr class effectively in Arena. Today I'll be talking about openings. What are they, their strengths, weaknesses, and when you should be using them. Now I believe openings to be what really sets Zephyr apart from other classes, in the sense that we simply have so damn many of them. The amount of ways to start a combo is truly insane in comparison to other classes, which usually always stick to only one or two of them. So without further ado, let's just hop into it by looking at all the main ways a Zephyr can engage. So the very first skill I would like to talk about is of course Traceless, one of the most known skills of the Zephyr class, our signature skill to some people actually, but more in the lower level, and it is our acupuncture. Now this skill is quite different from all the other acupunctures in the sense that it's very slow. Usually an acupuncture is very fast or even instant, like Harmony for example, while the Zephyr one is delayed, it is very very slow. Because of this, I personally don't even believe that it should be used as an opening anyway, like ever, almost ever, just because it's so slow. A good opponent will be able to always block you, pretty much 10 out of 10 times. It is only really possible to use it as an opening against newer players, or in more certain situations, which I will show it later. Now, I have an all set up here, and I will actually show that you can actually very easily block it, even like even with an alt, that's how slow it is. So, in a second, yeah, that's how easy it is. Basically, it's so slow that I could even alt tap to an alt and just quickly do it. So the counter to trace is very easy. You just turn around and block. You don't even need to block all nine one hundred eighty degrees. You can actually block only half. Since traceless is blocked from half, well, that's the way block works. It actually doesn't block just the front. It actually blocks the sides also in an arc. So if you block to the side, that will be enough to actually block Traceless. So yeah, in that sense, I believe Traceless to be pretty weak and really bad as an opening. But, however, it does have implications. Now the first one I would like to show to you is how to combine it with Willow Break to actually cut the animation of the Traceless by half. This is the one way how you could just flat out Traceless someone, just acupuncture them, ignoring the block. Now, to do this, this is based more on speed. This makes it a lot harder to block it just because it's so fast. So the idea is that you go up there, you start using the willow break, then you swap the traceless as you're coming down. Boom. Now what happened is the animation of traceless got cut in half. It became twice as hard to block it. Now in a heated battle, in the middle of it, as you're fighting, it can become really, really hard to do it. And people will usually not even be able to block it. I only know on the server a few people who would actually be able to do this effectively every single time, naming the Clockwork or Shunka as one, well, as such. Usually a person won't be able to do it, so it's actually a very very simple and easy initiation to do. Also a lot, it has a lot to do with the timing. As you are landing with the Willow Brick, you want to make sure that you're actually casting it at the right moment. The, the right moment, the better you cast it, the faster it's going to be. Usually you want to do it around the time when you're coming back from the Willow Brick. As soon as you hit the ground, you start jumping back up, that's when you want to do the trace list. Like so. Go in, and instantly swap. So yeah. Also another thing to know about this initiation is that you want to do it really fast. In the sense that, uh, depending on the opponent player, the, every single class has a different way of countering Willow Break. Some don't have any at all actually. This is why Willow Break is actually very very powerful against Harmony. It is actually a vital skill to use against them because they don't have any tools to use against them. Now by tools, I mean grab. Grab is the biggest counter you have to the Willow Break initiation. Because as soon as you start casting it, they can just grab you. That's it. That's where it won't work at all. Uh, this is usually most shown by Splendors and Shaolin's. Those two classes can instantly grab you as, get into, as you get into range of them uh, vertically, as in in the air. They can just grab you midair. So against those two classes, you usually never want to use it, unless the two exceptions are, one, if it's on cooldown, you grab it is, and two, if you do it really fast. Now basically, you do it so fast, you don't even have the time to react to it, and you instantly grab them. This will be in a heated battle, right in the middle of it. So if you do it that fast, you usually won't be able to react to it. That's the, those are the only two situations where you should use that. Against any other class, I would actually just do it flat out. Against Harmonies, actually, I don't even use other forms of initiation. I only use Willow Break. Basically, I will go into the air, I will start bashing them with Willow Break for forever. Just do it and do it and do it. And then suddenly, boom, I acupuncture them. 
And once the acupuncture is down, I use the combo, I will just kite them for another, how long is it right now? Yeah, 24 seconds. I will just kite them the whole time so my willow break is back up. It is not that hard to actually kite the harmony, since if he goes too hard on you, you can actually use other forms of initiation, because he's just trying too hard to go in. You have to always be very careful when going in on any class, and so when someone gets too desperate, it's very easy to counter initiate. So that's what you should be looking at when using traceless. Alright, another very important thing to know about traceless, one of the key factors, is that the fact that it's delayed is both a pro and a con. Now, it is a con, obviously, because the people can just react to them block. But the delay it has is actually a very powerful pro, in the sense that while it's delayed, it actually follows opponents wherever they go. It does not hit where the person was when you cast it. It hits when it lands, when it finishes casting. So basically, what this makes, why it makes it very powerful is that if the person, opponent, is dodging in a direction or jumping, Traceless will actually follow them when they land. So you can use this as an effect to, do, uh, to acupuncture them as they are unable to defend against it. I'll show them an example with my alt. Basically, my alt is just walking around, so it starts jumping and it dashes the direction. What I do, I start casting Traceless and I land him, and I land it on him as he's landing me on from the air. He's going to hit 100% and he's going to be unable to block it because he was in the air as it was landing. This is what causes those weird situations where you think the Traceless hit me there. It didn't. It hit your leg because you were landing. So basically you have to time it really well. It is quite difficult to pull this off against good players because the main counter tool to this traceless effect is basically when you're landing from the air, wait for the opponent to separate to start casting the traceless and only then dash to the side. This will make it impossible for them to follow you because you have to hit it exactly as he's starting to cast his traceless. So yeah, that's the main implication. It is a very powerful tool. It's one of the main ways I use Traceless, if I ever use it without other skills. I use it when they're landing and when they're dodging backwards. Here is now, now I'll show you an example of such a situation with the dodge. Alright, now here's another use for Traceless. Now this is a very, very high-tech one. And it's one that you use the least, and I have not actually seen anyone use it yet. And this is using Traceless as a take. But basically, there is one thing about Traceless, very specific thing, is that when you use it, you can actually instantly cancel it. And as you do that, you can actually bait your opponent into blocking, to turning around and blocking, and at the same time doing something else. Basically, here's an example. You use Traceless, and you instantly cancel it. And then you go in. So yeah, that's what you want to learn to do. It's a very powerful... You can actually, it doesn't even go on cooldown if you use the cancel it, and will just beat your opponents turning around and then make them very susceptible to their own forms of CC. For example, they're not, and I can hit them. So, yeah. that's how you should sometimes use it if you want to really bait them. I don't recommend using this often as any form of initiation. You want to bury them all the time so your opponent is never expecting, never truly knows what you're about to do. Always bait them. So, yeah, that's another cool use for traceless.